Last time on the Banner Saga. Who is that, you ask? It can't be, says Ivan. He runs towards the gate, shouting, You see their banner? It's a con! As you wonder how they got here, the gates are heaved open and he charged onto the field, clearing a path through Dredge. The journey continues. Welcome back, everybody, to the screen before the battle. Now we have to... We have to go see what Hakan is doing in, um, Boer's Guard. As I adjust my chair a lot. Now, Ivor is is rough and ready to go, but our other two Varl are just... are destroyed. <sighs> nice burp there. Thanks, me. I appreciate it. Are destroyed. So, it looks like this is going to be a primarily human mission. As much as that thought scares the hell out of me. We might take Crummer, but I think Gunolf can stay behind. We'll take Eggle out. Did he at least get kills? Nope, he didn't even get a single kill. <sighs> Shaking fists in impotent rage. Oh well. Let you're coming, and which of you has less kills? You're both you both have the same kills. Fine. The one who's rank three gets to come. Now, are any of these rank 5 items actually, like, worth having on, um, on Ivand? Nah, other than the, uh, Bjorg Aleander, it's not really, none of them seem worth it. So, I guess we just, we roll with this. Let's go. Darn, I was hoping we'd at least get to fight with some of our friends. But nope. Doesn't seem like that's how it's gonna be. At least this time, the situation isn't so incredibly stacked against us as it was before. There's a really good thread the needle opportunity over here. So I want to position Alette to take advantage of it. Otherwise, I think we're going to set up our Varl to um, kill the Stone Guard as fast as possible. We'll put Nid up there. We'll put uh, Mogan up there, and I think that'll do it. All right. Go, Ivor. Break, his ar break its armor. Oh, no. You get to go first? That's the worst news. Oh well. There's more armor to be broken. Get to it! Also, this is the greatest arc lightning of all time. I really hope nothing happens that disturbs it. Whoa, the music just cycled really weirdly there for a second. <laughs> Threw me off. The best Dark Lightning of all time! Run, Ivan. This is your moment. All the willpower. Yeah! Then we have Nid. Who unfortunately has, like, no strength whatsoever. Or I would definitely make use of her to do some more productive things than probably just run up here and break this guy's armor a little. Good job. Alette's got some strength, though. She's got some punch to her. She can, uh, she can hit this guy, give him what for. Oh, there's the other flame slinger. Darn it, I need to kill this one. This one over here before his bombs go off. Because I think, yep, he gets to move soon. We may be able to get everyone out of the way of his bombs before he moves, though. 
Which would be just as good, in my opinion. Get out of here. Up. Oh, Anti-exertion strike on Nid. That's fine. I need to get Crummer out of the way of all these explosives. So I guess he's going over here. And then he can hit this guy right in the strength. And I guess we run, uh... I don't think the bombs will kill this guy if I don't... If I don't, like, uh, if I don't hit him a little first. So I guess I'll just run, uh... Mogan over here and have him get the kill. Come on. You know you want to hit him. Wow, that armor break. Ivan, could you patch him up, please? Up, oh, coming right for him. And then we have Nid, who I can have run over here and not do anything of use because she doesn't have exertion this turn. And then Alette, ooh, Alette has a, has a sick thread the needle here. I'll spend all the points. Just thread that needle. Oh, nicely done. I would not be so impressed if AoEs weren't so incredibly hard to come by in this game. But I am, and they are. Holy crap. Oh, well, at least it's done. And now Crummer can start cleaning up. And... Mogan actually has a decent bloody flail, so I'll have him take that. Nice. You're dying, but that's that's known. It is known. Ivan, I need you to help protect our our fair archers. So that they can do more useful things than dying to this guy. Double exertion shot. And then Let can come over here and just ping this guy a little. Ah, uh, you could have lived one more turn if you hadn't done that. That's a shame. Ah, uh, darn it. I didn't want his, exer his exertion this turn. But it doesn't matter because he'll be dead. Speaking of things that are dead, let's use some arc lightning. Okay, death may have been a bit premature to say. Also, it bounced diagonally the way that I really didn't want it to. Sorry, that was entirely my fault. Entirely my bad. Sorry. Yeah, here. And then Ivor can come over here and kill this one. Oh my god, so many bombs. No more bombs for you, you're cut off. Forever. Or not. 
Ivan, I'd really appreciate it if you just, uh, just, yeah, just do that. Still could not save Alette, but that's fine. She is still alive. And we get more renown. Yay. I really should have promoted people before this. Juno. I wasn't sure I'd ever see you again, Ivan. She smiles and they embrace. Ivan is completely taken aback, as though he doesn't dare believe she's real. I'm sorry, I couldn't make it to Sigurholm. I ran into problems. Problem is putting it lightly. There's a mile-wide canyon practically splitting the world in two over those hills. Couldn't find a place to cross. Worse, dredge are practically falling out of it like blood from a wound. They're not coming from the north er anymore. They're everywhere. We noticed. Glad to see you made it out alive, Ingvar. I take it the others didn't. Hakan becomes quiet, then he motions towards Juno. She got across somehow, found her out cold for a second time since leaving Strand. We need every axe we can get right now. Bellower is here. Gods be damned, I thought I was free of that menace. I will deal with Bellower. Come on, no need to tempt him by standing out here. Hakan's caravan enters the city, fighting off waves of dredge as they go. To your relief, hundreds of skill war skilled warriors are now safely in Bower's guard. Oh my god, the supplies. Hakan joins you on the wall with his personal bodyguard, Moker. Behind him, the prince, Ludin, stands alone, looking miserable. I have one last trip to make. I need this, I need this one to come with me, she says, pointing to you. I'm sorry, Ivan. You must wait for me one last time. Do not let the city fall before I return. It takes everything within Ivan's power to hold back, but he does. She turns to you. Rook, come with me. We'll return in two days, maybe less if you're as quick as you look. Tell anyone who needs to know. We'll be slaughtered out there. Juno pauses and something shifts in your vision for just a moment. I know it's hard, she says, her voice filling your head, and you've already been through a lot. As she speaks again, the rest of the world melts away, but you're needed. You can't find the words to argue. Oh, you tugged on my thread, didn't you? Also, who the hell are these people? You don't remember leaving the city, but here you are, walking through unfamiliar ground behind Juno. You're alone, aside from hundreds of dredge who are all facing towards an enormous stone ahead. The hairs on the back of your neck stand up. What dredge are these? They all have staves. Are they their priests? Also, I should definitely zoom in. They're praying at a godstone? To which god? We're at the Godstone of Stravs. You glance nervously around, but the dredge didn't seem to hear her. It's okay. You can speak. Softly. Is this where you're going to sacrifice me? Juno smiles. What could have come across as profoundly creepy looks sincere instead. No. The dredge cannot see us. To be more precise, they can see us, but I've convinced them to be unconcerned. I can understand your apprehension, though. Who are you? I wish we'd had time for a proper introduction. My name is Juno. I'm on the Mender Council. You've met Ivan, my apprentice. How are you doing these things? Controlling mines? I thought Menders built things and healed wounds. You're right. Menders do these things. Some of us still practice the teachings given to the Loom Mother's first creations. We are called the Valka. I believe I am the only one who can influence another's mind. Then why not take control of Bellower? I learned the talent to heal minds, not control them. You just controlled mine, though. Though even some Valka have trouble believing this. 
Taking control of Bellower. It is the difference between convincing a child to sit still and telling a starving bear to stop being hungry. The truth is, we're rarely a match for the Sunder anymore. Our advantage is that we can train more Valka. That it is also our weakness. The Valka pass on and lose their knowledge, while the Sunder simply grow older and more powerful. Bellower is both immortal and beyond my influence, to a point. Then how do we stop him? The God of Secrets will play a part, as will you. Why did you pick me? Why didn't you take Ivan or Khan? You don't even know me. I apologize for putting you in danger. Ivan must keep Boer's guard from falling while we are away. And if something goes wrong here, I need to be certain one of us makes it back alive. I saw th I saw the thoughts of each person when I arrived at Boer's guard. You were the you were the only one I knew would return. What do you mean? You would find your way back to Alet no matter what. Interesting. What are we doing out here? Do you know of the god Strahd's? Few know the stone exists, even amongst those who have lived their whole lives in Beauregard. While Dangler deals in fortune, Strahd's taught men the value of trade in a different way. He showed them it has consequence, two sides of the same coin. See the silver in the stone? The gales up here wear away the stone, but the metal remains. We need a piece of this silver. The god Stravs is, read, is wreathed by imagery of silver weapons. The myths say he traded these weapons to the gods, and they use them to kill each other. Those who seek out the stone call him the god of trade. The menders call him the god of secrets. He was both. So we're trying to make a weapon to kill Bellower, I'm guessing. Why are we surrounded by dredge? They seem to be drawn to the Godstone. There are many things we don't know about Strahd's. Maybe they see him as a patron. Or it is an attraction they cannot explain. Does Strahd's have something to do with that serpent in Einartoft? What was that thing? I cannot say. Can't? I have my suspicions, but until I've had time at the Mender Libraries, it would be unwise to speculate. For all our knowledge, it always seems as though we know little. Imagine how the rest of us feel. On the contrary, the less people know, the more certain they tend to be. Let's get what we need and go. Indeed, you'll need to dislodge at least a fistful of the metal. You'll forge it into an arrow to slay Bellower. Wait, after everything you've told me, make a magic arrow to shoot Bellower? That's all it takes? Why didn't you do that a long time ago? Juno gets a faraway look in her eyes. No, that is not all it takes. What I tell you now must not be repeated. The arrow will not kill Bellower, even were it to strike his heart. He has no physical weakness. But it will sow doubt in his mind. When it pierces him, I will help him to believe that he is dying. The rest of you will convince him of it with sword and axe. Everyone who fights at your side must believe it to be true. You're going to trick him into thinking he's dead? That is the most insane... He, he really can't be killed? No. Someday he will awaken and realize he's not dead. I imagine he will be quite upset. First, we must make the arrow. Focus on the task at hand. She looks knowingly at the godstone, waiting for you to start climbing. Rook, I am not certain how the dredge will react when you do this. And behind us is a sudden drop. So be careful. Thanks. Oh, yep, that is a sudden drop. Meanwhile, whoever this guy is, like the dredge pope, is busy praying. Approaching the back of the stone, you start to climb, looking for a loose piece of the silver vein. Even without looking out onto the dredge, you can feel each sinister face watching you closely, held back only by Juno's influence. Panic races through your blood. Climb higher where it may be easier to remove. As you climb, you can't help but notice the stony masks of dredge lined up before the godstone, like worshippers before an idol. Just a glimpse nearly immobilizes you. Your hand rests on a piece of silver that comes away easily. The dredge do not 
react. Look for another piece. While you're here, you glance quickly around to see if there's any more low-hanging fruit. You're able to pry away another, smaller piece of silver ore before your nerves give out. You nimbly descend to where Juno is waiting. Well done, she says, as you walk back through the dredge, their heads turn in unison to follow. The dread that lingers and the shaking in your hands does not subside for hours. We did it! Kind of. Strav's Whetstone. You approach the gates of Bower's Guard again, relieved that they're still standing. It looks like they took a beating while you were gone. Alette rushes to your side and throws her arms around you once you've crept through the gates. Juno smiles at the reunion and tells you, Take this time with your daughter. Find a smith who can fashion an arrow from that silver. I have other things to which I must attend, but meet me on the walls when you are done. Though, that's an interesting question about the Bellower. Because, apparently the dredge were made by a god? So that's a, uh... That's a philosophical question, I suppose. Can the gods create something so immortal that even they can't kill it? I mean, apparently the answer is yes, because even the weapon made to kill gods won't kill this thing, but... Philosophy. It's important, kind of. Let's see what we have. We got something, really... We got another, um, rank 5 item. Strav's wet Whetstone, plus 20% chance of crits. Alright. Oh, Hakan's in the perfect position to be promoted. How much will it cost? Because I will definitely do that. I guess I'll just give him... Oh, he got new stats. He got, um... He got new points. I don't think he had three exertion before. So I'll just give him more strength. He has a ton of strength. Yeah, I'm just going to spend all this renown on promoting. Add everyone who I think is useful. Ludin, you have 18 kills? Holy crap. Did I just not notice that? I mean, I must not have noticed that. Did I? Were you? Oh, they're all... All the Varl are set to max. So if I want to promote them, I can. I really want to promote Ivor, but I feel like I should promote one of these other Varl so I can give them a rank 5 item. Gris, maybe? I mean, if I load him out, he'll be really good. Oh, wait, he's not there. Moger's there. I can promote Moger to uh, max rank. Because I feel like that's a thing I should do. I'll give you maximum strength and one more armor. And that means I can give, um... I can give Hakan Strav's Whetstone. And I can give Moger the Obsidian Bell. Yeah, I like this. Hmm. How far are we into the episode? Oh, we're like 20 minutes in. Also, what happened here? That entire area is just completely blown out. What the hell? So I don't want to call it here because we're only like 20 minutes in. So I think we'll go, we'll go see the crafters. We'll probably do everything that comes before the fight. It takes a while, but you finally find someone willing to craft an arrow for you. He eyes you suspiciously when you sew him the silver, but shakes his head and gets started. Alette watches, the smith's fire reflecting in her distant stare. I talked with Ivan a long time while you were gone. He told me a lot about Juno. Is she really as powerful as he said? It certainly seems that way. That might be the most luck we've had so far. Dad, I think I know what's going to happen now. An arrow? She's going to make you shoot Bellower, isn't she? I don't know for sure. 
Come on, who else is going to do it? Ivor? Alette, I know where this is going. You're afraid of me dying. This isn't like before. We can't run this time. That's not what I... Let me do it. What? Why not? Because you think I'll get hurt? What do you do when Bellower comes straight for the person holding the only thing that can destroy him? Let me speak. Everything's changed. Skoger feels so long ago. I'm not asking because I'm afraid of losing you. I'm not... I'm not afraid of anything anymore. Let me do it because you know I'm a better shot. I have a better chance of puncturing his armor. We only have one shot. I'm not a child anymore. I'm not just some girl. I'm your daughter. I can do this. For once, let me decide what happens to me. You know what? That's, that's a pretty good speech. That's a hero speech. I know you can do it. Take the arrow. She smiles and takes her hand in hers. We'll survive this. I know we will. You sit by her side silently until the smith finishes his work. Alright. This may be it. We're, we're gonna stop it whenever it is, whenever it is quote-unquote it. So let's see if this is it. There he is. Juno is in the middle of an animated debate as you approach, the arrow in your hand. There is little time left. Bellower knows we're here. Whatever he is waiting for, whether he's waiting for more of his forces to arrive or simply wants to starve us out first, I cannot tell. But he will not expect a direct attack. Is this a joke? How are we going to do that? I will take a handful of warriors to face him. I can keep a small group hidden from sight. The rest of you will lead the charge from here. With luck, Bellower will send his armies away from himself to meet you. What about the ravens? They may protest. They will not. I've arranged a task for them. Even if you make it to Bellower, what chance is there of defeating him? We saw what happened at Einartoft. That thing can't be killed. Juno shows them the arrow you had forged from the Godstone Silver. This will make him bleed like the rest of us. Once he is pierced, he will be vulnerable. She looks you in the eyes. We only have one. Do not miss. And bring only those you absolutely need. I will take all my concentration to keep the other dredge from swallowing us up. I cannot join in battle. And if we kill Bellower, then what? The dredge will just wander away? That is my belief, yes. I can't say for certain. This is a doomed plan. Help us hold out here until the ships are finished. And then what? Bellower will hound our every step, all the way to Abarang, where I'm where I am certain more sunder await. Now is the time to speak to loved ones in the memory of any god that pleases you. Rest. In the morning, we slay asunder. Yep, there he is. All right, so next episode we're going to have what I'm guessing is the final fight for this uh, for this game. We'll be taking on Bellower, Bellower himself, who, despite just looking like a larger stone guard, is apparently the world's most unkillable super being. Should be a blast. For now, though, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and a comment if you like what you saw. Always appreciated, and I will see you next time.